Hello and welcome. I am Matt Roddy, and this is the Greater Prescott Podcast, where we talk about, you guessed it, all things Greater Prescott. Today, I want to welcome my guest, Bobby Jane from Way Out West Photography. Bobby, Hi. thanks for coming to the house and in the studio. Thanks for inviting me. <laughs> I know Bobby because Bobby and I work for the same company. I work at Guardian Landscape. Matt Keppel's the owner. And over time, you found out that I do a podcast and I found out you do photography. Right. <laughs> and what was it? A few months ago now, you did some Our Family oh, Photos. Oh, Family Photos for Christmas. Yep, for, our, for Christmas. Turned out great. It was, oh, it was awesome. such a, it was a nice day, too. It was a great day. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't that like middle of December? <laughs> yep. So that's how I know Bobby. Um, you've been awesome at Guardian. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Mm -hmm. I, I I enjoy working there. It's my that's my day job. Yeah, and then photography is my fun and hobby job. So. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's probably no surprise. A lot of the people I don't even know if a percentage. I'm I'm gonna find this out later. Okay. Like I don't know if it's fifty fifty in terms of people like you who we we are going to talk about kind of your side hustle, if you will. Right. Um, and that's a lot of the people who come on, you know, yeah. or yeah. And this is my side hustle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I just, that kind of just hit me. Yeah. Well, and like photography, it's, it's such an up and down market, um, especially when it became digital. Um, mm. So sometimes you can make a living at it and other times not so much. Gotcha. So. Interesting. <laughs> especially yeah. now with the pandemic, things got even stranger. So. I bet. Actually, we'll talk about it a little yeah. bit because I'm, I'm curious, like how I cannot wait for us in 5, 10, 15 years to look back and have all these stories of this happened. Mm -hmm. This happened to photographers during COVID. This happened to yeah. the, the whole movie industry has just been thrown upside down. So yeah. just a lot of things. <laughs> I, I like business and that that's all. Yeah, it's like, fa it's fascinating. It doesn't work. And it's like you're at that point in your age, you're like, wow, I lived through a pandemic. I lived through the Great Recession, yeah. you know, and it's like you start seeing history repeat yourself and you're like, oh, this is interesting. <laughs> We're getting old, Bobby. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> That's the end of the story. <laughs> All right. Podcast is over. We're getting old. <laughs> All right. To kick it off, where were you born and raised? What did you do when you were a kid? And kick it off. Um, actually, I was born in Wichita, Kansas. Okay. Um, my dad's from Kansas. My mom's from Iowa. Uh, my parents actually met in Mesa, Arizona when they were junior and seniors in high school. Okay. Um, they're both their families had just happened to move to Arizona. Yeah. Um, they got married right out of high school and they went back to Kansas and my dad worked for Boeing. Um, what Boeing. did you do for Boeing in Kansas? I don't actually remember. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't born yet. Um, and But eventually he started working for um, electric companies. Okay. Um, so when I was two, not quite three, my dad took a job in Tucson, Arizona okay. um, for a rural electric company. He wanted to get away from the whole snow. Yeah. <laughs> so that's all I remember. I don't remember Kansas, obviously. I remember Tucson. Yeah. That's pretty much, that's where I grew up. Okay. Um, all my life, I moved around some when I was younger. And I moved to Prescott my first time in 2008. Okay. Went back to Tucson for a couple years, and I came back up here in 2015. Okay. So all in total, I've been here about 12 years. So. Okay. Yeah. yeah. You're so an oldie and, up here. I know. <laughs> so in a nutshell, that's kind of where yeah. I come from, where the family history is. Um, so family is Midwestern. Yep. So mm -hmm. Midwestern family. Um, Tucson, you know, it was great to grow up in Tucson, but now that's, it's just so That's congested. where I grew up? Yeah, you're mm -hmm. from Tucson too. Yeah. yeah. Where, what part of town? Um, Sorrel National Monument West. Okay. So, which in the 80s We were far was, from East. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So in the 80s, it really, there was nothing out there. Oh, there's... Yeah. No, I went to the Marana High School. My dad, again, worked for the rural electric company. So we had to live within so many miles of the Trico's office. Okay. So we grew up there. So, I mean, I literally got to grow up in the country, which I Absolutely. totally appreciate. Yeah. yeah. And it's, for those who don't know, it's beautiful country it's over there. Yeah. It's, uh, every time I go back, uh, the desert has its own beauty. Yeah, Just it does. like the mountains and the trees have it. And yeah. I think most people just picture the desert as almost like the Sahara Desert. Yeah. Like there is nothing. But no, it is beautiful. It is beautiful. I just went back for Christmas and I hadn't been back for a few years. And it was just, it was interesting because I'm like, wow, the mountains there 
I mean, Prescott still has nothing on Tucson mountains. I agree. Yeah. yeah. You know, we're like, oh, Granite Basin. And then you go back <laughs> and I go back to Tucson and I'm like, oh, OK. And I literally, because I grew up there, I, w- I had a very short time, like one year. I lived in Nebraska. OK. And I literally had to learn how to read a map and learn yeah. my directions because I'm like, there's no mountains. I don't know where I'm at. Well said. And it was very, very nauseating. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Mount, the Catalinas mm-hmm. are just, It's as soon yeah. as you walk out of my mom's door on the east side of yep. town, it's just right there. And yeah. it is just shockingly amazing, especially after yeah. being away for some years and yeah, then you go is. back and visit. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And the whole Saguaro thing. Yeah, the swirl, well, swirls, swirls are fascinating. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so it's a definitely just a different environment. Yeah. Um, did different you grow culture. up on acreage? Were we did. A, okay. Yeah, we had three like, acres. There's not a whole lot of neighborhoods. No, not back. Especially not, not back then. then yeah. So uh-huh. now, now we now we do sell. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So that's kind of in a nutshell. Um, let's see, I had one sister. She is seven years. She is seven years older than me. Okay. Um, so quite a bit of difference there. Like by the time I was in fifth grade, she's already graduated high. school school um so kind of more like an only child yeah, upbringing definitely. um so my entertainment was my <laughs> animals <laughs> okay my animals um and that's kind of how i got into photography i was always playing playing with my mom's camera okay even if we didn't have film i made pretend film yeah, out of paper absolutely. and pretend i was taking pictures and then when i got to take pictures or i had film it was black and white and i would take pic- and like take pictures of the animals and i would dress up the dogs and the cat and they were part of they were my models yeah. mm-hmm. <laughs> and um, you know never really thought much about photography until i got into high school really okay what kind of animals um, dogs. I had grew up. Um, mm-hmm. We had a variety of either two or three dogs at any given okay. time. A couple cats. Mm-hmm. Um, my sister was on the other side. She had the 4-H chickens and That's pigeons and stuff. Yeah, okay. I sh- I trained dogs for 4-H. So oh. th- when I grew up, so <laughs> that was that is that, that was a thing. It it, is a yeah, thing? it still is a thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and then I ended up um, in my teens. I had a Boston Terrier, and I actually mm-hmm. did 4-H with her and AKC. So I like Bostons. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, black and white. Yeah. Like the typical. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do they come in other colors? I... They do now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 It's like everything I feel like else. like the, just that stock <laughs> photo in my mind I know. is that black and white. I know. Well, that's yeah. what Diesel is. You've met Diesel. He's oh, a, yeah. yeah. He's the Boston pug mix. I was going to say he's got a little pug in him. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But he's okay. he's a bug. B-U-G-G. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so, so funny. Yeah. He's funny. So, yeah. um yeah, so I so dogs have always been a part of my life. Yeah, and even in the past twenty five years, it's like I have my dogs, I have my camera, I'm okay, and yeah. that's always been my base for mm-hmm. my entire life. It feels like so. Yep. <laughs> so you graduated Marana High School. I did graduate. How many Marana. kids in your graduating class? About a hundred, hundred and twenty. Curious what it is yeah. now. I'll I don't have to ask I'm my mom know. if she has any clue. She's yeah. still down there because <laughs> it's a good sized looking school. I mean, it, yeah, they Marana is now a whole town. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's Interesting. crazy. <laughs> yeah. What did you do after high school? Um, so after high school, I actually – so we'll back up a little bit to high yep. school. Um, I actually dropped out of algebra to my junior year to take photography. Okay. And that's how I got into <laughs> photography. So once I got into photography in high school, I was completely hooked. Yeah. Um, you know, learned all the basics and then decided that's what I wanted to go to college for. Okay. Um, so when I graduated, I went to Colorado Institute of Art. In, awesome. In Denver, Colorado. Now, <clears throat> time frame that so that was nineteen ninety five. Okay. So everything was still film based. My so you, yeah. You graduated high school in ninety four, ninety five? Ninety five, yeah. Okay. I was oh one. Okay. Just to <laughs> put it in context now for everyone. I am old. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's why I say it, Bobby. <laughs> yeah. Um yeah, so I graduated in ninety five. So I went through high school learning photography. You yeah. know, dark room, camera, film based. Yeah. And then I went to college for it, the same structure. I mean, we still checked out um, cameras. We checked out the big old box cameras for do- learning how to do architectural photography. Okay. Um, you know, I had all different types of cameras, different film, um, color dark room, just a whole entire yeah. scope. It was a two year program. And so just the whole scope of it. But at that time, careers in photography there wasn't a whole lot okay you know getting a job at, like i would have loved to have been a photojournalism mm. that photojournalist that's that's yeah. where i would have liked to gone but that's a pretty slim chance especially with no experience 
Um, if you didn't have money, you weren't going to open a photo studio. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so there weren't a lot of jobs in yeah. that. And I quickly figured out, you know, this is great, but not how are you going to make money doing this? Uh-huh. Um, so kind of fell into other things over the years. It wasn't until I moved up here in Prescott in 2008 um, that I actually got back into photography okay. professionally because by then it had changed to digital. So it was more cost effective. Yep. Um, I had started in 2000. I started my way out west photography website when I first got my first digital. Oh my gosh! When I first got my first digital camera. Talk about an OG website right yeah. there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So when I got my first digital cameras, when I started my website and okay. kind of was dabbling. And in that it. was 01 ish. Yeah, 2000 actually. Wow. Yeah. What kind of camera was it? It was a Kodak. Okay. And I remember when I got it, I got a free one gigabyte memory card. And it was a hundred dollar value, and it was free for one gig. Yeah, yeah, and it was like such a big deal. Oh my deal. gosh! Yeah, <laughs> that's hilarious. So, um, yeah, so that was kind of you know, I so I I was really interested in photography, and when I got the digital, it allowed me to do a lot more. Yeah, and I, and then being able to have a website. Um, and just kind of explore it more and, you know, get back into it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then when I moved up here to Prescott, and like I said, in 2008 is when I really got into doing the weddings and the portraits and the business side of it. Yeah. Because it made, it was obviously more affordable, um, but also just a lot more flexibility. Mm-hmm. So Makes sense. Yeah. I'm going to go off on a little tangent. Okay. Talk about Kodak. Okay, yeah. Being one of... Th- a, a company that just absolutely missed the boat oh, in yeah. terms of going digital. Like, well, <clears throat> why, why aren't so, I they... wish I hadn't even thought of that. So what I have, and I still have them at yeah. home, I have the Kodak dolls. Okay. And there were like three dolls that you got, and they were like click, flash, and snap or something oh. like that. And, you know, it was like, do you remember the green the um, green giant dolls? No. Okay, it must I just totally wasn't be a girl into thing. anything like that. Either, <laughs> I know, so. I know. Yeah. But like, no, it was like a thing. You collect so many UPC symbols and you send them in and you get all this stuff or whatever. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I, yeah, I still have yeah. those. Yeah. But Kodak supposedly, I mean, the the technology for digital had been there for quite a while since, okay. since the seventies. But it was a whole like fear, like if we push this, then we'll lose the film business. Yeah. So there was that whole shift as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So on that note, again, I told you I like business. Intel back in the day, they originally started by making memory, I believe. Mm-hmm. And then essentially one day they realized that that's not the future. But that was their yeah. – that, that's what they made all their money doing. They knew right. they needed to go to processors. That's it. Right. And the two CEO, the, the co-founders essentially fired themselves – literally they fired themselves – walked out of the building and walked back in and started essentially a new Intel designing chips oh, wow. that we know Intel for. Yeah. And they like they made that shift. Uh, I just find that fascinating. Like It, it is. I mean, when you and I, you know, we've been through the same generations and it's yeah. like, man, if we just known that or if we yep. had you known that, you know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, then skipping forward, you know, from when I started photography to 25 years later, now it's like everybody has a camera. It's mm-hmm. on your phone. It's and so the the appreciation has been lost. The value totally. definitely has yes. been lost. Um, and then the the schooling has been lost yeah. for it too. Mm-hmm. Everybody's like, oh well, I can be a wedding photographer, and it's like there's a lot behind that. Oh golly, yes. yeah, <laughs> right. I mean, it's not just if you can be a photographer. It's like, can you, you know, can you pace yourself? Can you handle the situation? Yep. Can you time everything? Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, that's what I appreciate about my schooling is because I was taught the old way. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm able to adapt to the situation. But you were taught. Yeah, I, exactly. I would argue yeah. <laughs> how many photographers have been taught. Right. They're like, mm-hmm. oh, I watch a YouTube video. Now I'm a photographer. I'm like, yeah. okay. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's not quite the same. Yeah. I'm like, I can not watch quite. a YouTube video on how to change oil in my car and I would not do a very good job. <laughs> It would be really bad. <laughs> Just bring it over. I'll do it. <laughs> yeah. I'd be like, okay, put it back together. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what kind of work did you do in between? Or uh, Since photography has so, maybe never been your f- 100% right. full-time. I've fallen into um, – I fell into sales and marketing. Okay. Um, a lot of sales jobs, all variety of sales jobs. Like um, what? 
Tucson, TucsonHelpWanted.com. Okay. I ran the job board during its peak, oh my um, 2005 to 2008. Was it an internet job board? An internet job okay. board. Um, I was the only sales rep for the Tucson region. I took the job board from basically like $20,000 a month in sales to $100,000 a month was, in sales. So there's ad, ads on there? Yeah, so uh, employers had people. Yeah, people had to pay for job yeah. ads, so, which is something weird too because we don't really even have that anymore. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but that was the first shift between newspaper classified jobs to the internet jobs yeah. and then getting the employers to pay for that. Yep. And, yeah, so I went through that. I was that was like one of my big sales jobs. Okay. Um, but yeah, a lot of different sales jobs, yeah. which is you know, sales just turn over and turn over. Yeah. Um, so I get kind of burned out on that. So mm -hmm. I finally, when I came up to Prescott, I'm like, you know what? I want my day job, and then I want to save my energy and my sales for my own business. Yeah. For my photography. Good point. So that's what I've been doing. That that nice balance. Yeah. Since '08, pretty much. Pretty much. Yeah. Okay. So awesome. So kind of went more along the lines of administration. Office management, operations management, mm -hmm. and that's really my niche. I'm just good at just putting all the pieces together and yeah. juggling things. So good because <laughs> people like Matt, yeah, and just business owners are just they're so busy yeah. and running in so many different directions. They need someone like you, right? And I'm so good to... at seeing the, from the outside in and being like, well, this needs to go here and this needs to go yeah, here, and point. then do you have this and we need that and good just point. putting it all together. So yeah, what all what types of jobs? Well. What brought you up to Prescott the first time and then had then just you... a change of I went through a divorce okay. and I just wanted a different lifestyle, yeah. just a change of pace. Okay. Um so I kind of just researched Arizona, like yeah. where else to live. And I at the time I chose Prescott because it had a lot of the amenities, mm -hmm. but it had the climate that I liked. Yeah. So Yeah. And it's four hours from Tucson. Tucson. Yeah. Yeah. It's not on the whole, it's not far. No. Mm -hmm. So, and then, so my parents still live in Tucson. My mom spends a lot of time up here with yep. me. Um, so yeah, it's just, it's a nice, nice diversity, I guess, up here. It is. So. I, and on that note, cause I grew up in Tucson th this morning, I think it was 30 degrees. It's only 10 degrees different. It's it, but it makes a huge difference. Yeah, I think is where I was going with yeah, that. Yeah. Like, cause I would have growing up, I would have thought that 30 degrees was like the end of the world. Yeah, right? I know, I know. Like it gets up to 55 and it's perfectly sunny. Like it's, yeah. it's a little breezy today, but on the whole, it's just beautiful. Yeah. It's just beautiful. But this up here, 55 degrees is actually warmer than Tucson, 55 degrees. Cause we have the high elevation. The uh, sun is so intense. So my mom and it is so intense. It is intense. So I mean, I mean, I was out hiking just earlier this week, and it was like sixty three degrees, and I'm like, oh my gosh, it's too hot. <laughs> Especially <laughs> coming like, off the winter time. Yeah, yeah but just the direct sun on you, and it's and just like yeah, oh, I never. Yeah, I don't think I realized that. Yeah, that's that's huh. a lot of it. So where all have you worked up here? Well, and also uh, let's back up. Where mm -hmm. have you lived since you've been in the Prescott area? Um, pretty right. much just Prescott. I've stayed okay. within, I want to stay within the pine trees. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Um, my favorite community I've lived in was Highland Pines, which is way, as you know, yeah. up there in the pine trees. Yeah. So, I'm um, glad I wasn't there during this last snowstorm because yeah, that, no that might've done me. Yeah. Out. It's a, it is some <laughs> steep roads over there. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's crazy. Beautiful area. Yeah, it's pretty. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, just the Prescott area itself, just the, the trees and the climate and the elevation. So, yep. yeah. Where have you worked? Since you've been up here, um, I've done some different things. I've done marketing and photography for a real estate company. Okay, um, I worked for office manager for a local architect. Mm -hmm. um, and then you know, coming on board now, most recently with Matt. Okay. Um, so yeah, it's been pretty cool. How so. long have you been with Matt at Guardian um, Landscape? About a year and a half. Okay. Yeah. All so, right. Yeah. So awesome. pretty exciting that we just keep keep growing and keep growing I and. Know keep discovering things so it's great and you keep giving me flyers i know <laughs> and i'm like my phone starts ringing and i'm like oh i know where matt roddy is today <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> yeah you don't even need yeah that. and i'm like oh i forgot he's out there i need to be answering the phone okay <laughs> oh yeah right right yeah. <laughs> uh, <I'm Matt. laughs> so but it's great it's great to it's it's great to see like that's just a simple little thing it's just yeah. it's great to see how in this small of a community, we can make that kind of impact. And you went with my photography. It was the same thing when I was promoting my photography mm -hmm. business. It doesn't take much up here because it's such a small mm -hmm. network. Um, you know, it's it's just, it's really interesting on a community like this, the dynamics I of it. I've had, I've had people on both sides of the fence on that. And here's where I come out. There's people who say it's a small community. I don't care for that. I don't like how things get around quickly. Right. But, mm -hmm. And I'm on the side where... 
I like it. Um, I typically hang out with good people. I try to be a good person. Yeah, and yeah, so, like, <laughs> all of a sudden, I fall into just a huge swath of amazing people. Right. Like you, who right. I meet, and Matt, and Jimmy, and just everyone. And well, it's, yeah, it, I love it. Well, and it is. And it's like I said, I've been here on and off for 12 years. And so mm-hmm. I still stumble across people from my old network or yeah. people I've known. And then, like, we stumble across them again. And we see how we've all shifted. But yep. yet we still connect. So yeah. it's exciting. Yeah, you are not... But a couple people being, oh, I forget, how's the term go? You're, anyways, you're not <laughs> far from yeah. a lot of people. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Especially so, in the circles. Right. Mm-hmm. So it makes it makes a big difference. And then, you know, up here, I just like Facebook is like your news source up here. It is mm-hmm. your news source. We don't have much news right. sources up here. So Facebook's kind of the community connector of like mm-hmm. what's going on. So. Yep. <laughs> Let's talk about Way Out West Photography. Bring us up, uh, give for my a nice little sound bite uh-huh. of one minute or less. What is Way Out West Photography? Way Out West Photography is me, um, Bobby Jane. Bobby Jane. And I've been doing photography, I have 25 years of experience behind the camera. Um, my niche is people, places, and things, not landscape photographer. Um, Everybody always thinks, you know, you're a photographer, so you must do landscapes. And I don't have the patience for it, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> My style is more, more photojournalism, um, which makes me able to just adapt to situations. So if you're good at photojournalism, you're really good at weddings because things are just moving. And there is no repeating it. You just go with the moment. Yeah. And, you know, you can't get stressed out. You just capture what's going on. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's really kind of where my strength is and that fits a lot with my personality too um on the other end uh no go ahead okay on the other end um portraits and same thing i love doing portraits Mm -hmm. um i think even when i first started photography even as a kid you know taking pictures of my dogs and cats because Mm -hmm. i didn't have neighbors and had people (laughs) just capturing people and then i love doing like senior portraits where you would think you know, kids, um, like even younger kids, but especially seniors, and then going back and looking at that and then seeing the parents' reactions and knowing that you really caught their personality. And even myself, I don't know that teenager that well, but I can go back and look at that photos and like, that's their expression. And you have have a sense. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And Mm -hmm. it's exciting to see that, to see that, to be able to capture that. Um, Just like I did your family photos and just, you know, have going out there. Talk about dynamic. Right. Bring the four kids out. <laughs> yeah. You had, so, they were nice. You go <laughs> they with were the flow. Good. Yeah. But um, yeah. family storytelling is what I call it. Yeah. So, we, you know, we go out and we just have a good time. We went around Goldwater Lake. The yeah. kids got to play. We got some Literally. great pictures. I think they had a blast. We got grandma involved finally. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And and by doing that, the pictures are more genuine. Yeah. Um, the kids stay interested longer. And then overall, when you go back and look at the photos, it's actually telling a story. Yes. You can see everybody's true expressions. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's, it's, it's just really fun. So yeah. That's the goal of this podcast is yeah. that people can listen and get true expressions of you and I. Yeah. I'm not going to go back and edit it <laughs> just to make it sound perfect. But I, I, I like – I consider myself somewhat of a realist. Like mm-hmm. I, this is real life, guys. This is how it goes. And so yeah. I like that you yeah. weave that storytelling into it. Um, my other twist to my, my photography, so my hobby side is um, old structures and cars and things. Right. Um, so you go on my website, you'll see that um, there are a lot of that on there. So my hobby place or my favorite place to go is Gold King Mine in Jerome. Okay. Um, this year, okay, no, last year, I guess. Uh-huh. Now it's 2021. <laughs> it's almost March. Um, I finally got my lifetime member past for gold king mine okay because i've been up there since the original owner and now the current oh, owners wow. i've been up there so much um so that's just kind of a fun place if no one's ever been to gold king mine they should go it's basically one man's junkyard okay. um, all these old cars and americanas um old mining equipment mm-hmm. um studebakers mm-hmm. so yeah. yeah really fun so that kind of has tied in kind of naturally to my weddings and my portraits um, I have weddings and portraits in there, um, weddings on trains, portraits on trains, motorcycles, okay. um, a, 
a great little great lady that graduated from Embry Riddle. She was a pilot. Okay. And we did her graduation pic- pictures from Embry Riddle with the plane that she trained on. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. So I have pictures of people. I have a band. Um, when they were playing at an air show up here oh, with, with a plane in the background. <laughs> yeah. Um, motorcycles, old cars at weddings we brought in. Um, one wedding I brought in an old car that was just basically – it wasn't even a car. It was just basically some a car someone had built basically, okay. you know. Um, and we brought that in just to have for the wedding. Yep. So Yeah. And so it was just kind of fun. I go back and look at all these pictures and how this just naturally, you know, came about. Yes. <laughs> That's awesome. Where do you think – well, number one, are you into cars, motorcycles at all? Not like, or personally. It, okay. Not personally. I think it's just for me. I When I go to fo- – like someone likes to photograph landscapes mm-hmm. and they're totally fascinated by the Grand Canyon or, or yeah. the, what, the landscape, right? Mm-hmm. When I go up to like Gold King Mine or old cars, it's just the structure, the architecture yeah. of it yeah. um, that I like. And the colors and, and then adding a person into that makes it really fascinating. Yes. I just did senior pictures in December in Gold King Mine and I would love to do more of that. Oh, cool. And that was – it was so much fun. You know, here's this, you know, great, you know, great – um, kid and yeah. you know and just and you just put him in that environment and it just makes it a little bit different and more fun absolutely more relaxed and it was yeah. really neat and, di- and different you know As unique is the, yeah. the word that yeah came <laughs> yeah so How, and fun for them yeah like what a great place and so we were doing senior pictures for him so but his whole family came up so we were doing senior pictures and then we're like okay everybody over here we're going to take a family photo yeah. and we just ran around and took pictures so what a great idea <laughs> what other fun unique spots in this kind of greater Prescott area have you been to that you like to photograph? Um, Whether it's people or just the things there. Um, so the most famous thing I've uh-huh. photographed for Prescott, and this will take us a whole another direction, but we'll have to maybe do a whole another podcast on it, um, is an old speakeasy. Okay. And it was at the um, lower level of Moore's Laundry, okay. which now I believe is where that new arcade is. Oh, there's and, something under there? Yeah, there's an old speakeasy. So if you go to my website, the very first gallery okay. is the Gold Nugget Speakeasy, um, which is now, if you own the building, you might be able to still access it. For a while, that section of the building ended up being condemned. Okay. Um, these pictures were taken in, I believe, 2010, 2011. I assume it wasn't condemned at that point. No, the building was okay. up for sale. So I had an opportunity to go in with the real estate agent because Charlotte Hall Museum wanted it documented. So um, I went in yeah. there, took pictures, and gave the photos to Charlotte Hall Museum cool. to document it before the building was sold. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, and then it, the building was condemned mm-hmm. and sold and changed and everything like that. So I don't know where it is. Oh, my goodness. But at that time, Moore's Laundry, the dry cleaning place that had been there since the 40s, was still above and still operating. Um yeah, so the whole mystery of Prescott, is there tunnels underground? Why is there tunnels underground? Do they exist? Yeah. And everybody says, you know, no, you know. <laughs> there is something underground, yeah, apparently. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I'm actually in a book, and that's on my website gallery as well. Okay. And it's just kind of the history of underground Prescott um, by a local author as well. Cool. Um, so all the information's on there where the book is on Amazon and everything yeah. like that. Um, so it was just kind of a neat little thing I kind of just fell into and so that is so unique yeah it's it's crazy <laughs> can people go down not to that speakeasy right. that particular are one there but there um are spots? there are tunnels under saint michael's um okay. there's all most of all the buildings downtown so if you go down to by the palace mm-hmm. um and you look outside of the palace on the sidewalk you'll see kind of like stair- glass glass blocks oh okay and that's the key and you'll see them in flagstaff too so those glass blocks let the light in for the tunnels underground okay the tunnels are a way for um back in you know 18 1900s yeah. for um chinese workers mexican workers to go through the town without being seen. Okay. And that that was yeah. kind of the premise of it. Um, then there's the negative side. You know, well, no, they were just opium dens, which is yeah. what they had back then. Yeah. But a lot of it was just the workers, you know, keeping the workers out of sight. Yep. Um, going from one place to another. Does that book speak to a bit of that? Yeah. There talks about all the different locations of yeah. it and everything. So. 
Yeah, pretty interesting. Yeah, so what are, a yeah. unique town. I, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it's funny, like how we've kind of covered. I don't know why there's been so much speculation about the history of it, and why it was so covered up. And then she wrote the book on it, and yeah, um, yeah so it's pretty interesting. That is so cool. Yeah. <laughs> Where else have you photographed that's um, so that one particularly unique? Um, weddings. I did a wedding um, a couple years ago in Bisbee, Arizona, mm-hmm. um, and it was actually the wedding was inside an old warehouse. Okay, um, that was really fun. Um, a mansion and Flagstaff. Yeah. Oh gosh, there's so many different unique places. I yeah. um, the Powderbox Church in Jerome, Arizona. Okay, private property, um, family wedding, very small yeah. but very unique. I got pictures of that on, on the website. So the Powderbox Church um, in Jerome, it literally parts of it were built out of the old powder boxes from the mines. Okay. And so that's the really where it came from. Yep. How fun. Yeah. So, and that's, that's why I guess why for weddings, that's why I like doing weddings is I'm not mm-hmm. a romantic. I just like the people I meet yep. and the places I get to go. Absolutely. Um, I went to South Carolina, did a photo for my uh, wedding photography for my cousin. Okay. <laughs> I hear South Carolina is beautiful. It was beautiful. That's the yeah. furthest south I've ever been. Okay. And it was, her wedding was on a plantation. Yeah. And, you know, here's somebody coming from Arizona and I'm like, a plantation? Oh, wow. Yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is a thing. And then I just mm-hmm. remember too, oh, man, when I first got there, we were doing the rehearsal and it was just very, very humid. And very hazy. Mm-hmm. And I just about panicked. I'm like, where's the sun? And how am I supposed to photograph in this? No one taught me how to photograph <laughs> yeah, in right. this. And I really became appreciative of Arizona's oh, weather. Um, so I just prayed and prayed and prayed. And boy, on her wedding day, as the day progressed, it cleared just off. cleared out. Sunnier and sunnier and got hot. But it was sunny. Yeah. And we had the most gorgeous sunset. Oh, and good. it looked like Arizona. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, Phew. okay. The haze. <laughs> yeah. I was and in the, New Jersey for a summer. And yeah. the haze. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It was very, it was very yeah. weird because I was taking pictures and I'm like, what am I supposed to do with that? You yeah. know? <laughs> yeah. And yeah, so it was, it's definitely, you know, now I understand why people come to Arizona and mm. they're so fascinated with our red rocks and the Grand Canyon. And yeah. like, I live here and I'm like, it's rocks. I want to go see the uh, yeah. Rockies or something, you know? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so it's funny how our perspective changes, you know, totally. based on where we been brought up so. yeah and we're very blessed around here yeah because it is so diverse there's so many different things yeah topography wise and it's yeah. great yeah photography is such a an amazing thing because like you said you, your niches you told us what your mm-hmm. niches were but there's so many other areas oh, yeah. where people well, can do photography well and as the times have changed you know so one of the um guys i went to school with and um Colorado mm-hmm. Institute of Art. His dream was to go back to where he came from in Kansas City to work for Hallmark greeting cards. Okay. And he actually, I think he actually did accomplish that. But I just remember that was at that time, I was like, wow, that's a strange niche. Like, don't you want to be a National Geographic photographer? Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, that would have been like, mm-hmm. but that was where he wanted to go. Um, so if you look at from like the 80s, 90s, 70s, you know, it was a magazine, um, photography, photojournalism, yeah. newspapers. Well, a lot of that's gone away. Yes. And so now it's marketing, it's, um, you know, Facebook, Instagram, yeah. being your own Instagram star, mm-hmm. getting everything on Pinterest. It's just so crazy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Are you in any of that craziness, so to speak? Um, I've, I've kept up with Facebook. Okay. Um, I've dabbled in Instagram and Pinterest, mm-hmm. but... It's just a lot. I mean, you're like putting your photos on your website and then you're trying to manage it all these different different spots and trying to keep the copyrights and everything like that. And then since what I do is weddings and portraits. Yeah, those don't fit anyway. Yeah. So Mm -hmm. that makes um, sense. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So. Okay. Man. (laughs) I I also find it really unique how you've had to kind of bridge the uh, film to digital uh, do, was there ever a period when you were like, oh, my gosh, I just learned all of this film. I spent years doing it. No, and now I, I get to make yeah. now I have to make the switch to digital. No, a lot of people had a problem, but I was I'm very gifted with computers. I'm okay. very computer savvy, software, self-taught. Yeah. So that wasn't a problem. Um, I was glad to have that background because I knew how I wanted stuff to f- look. Mm-hmm. So I didn't have to rely on the auto, auto settings. Yeah. Um. 
And then yeah, also, yeah, pe- people probably just glazed over. Wait, yeah. you do non-auto setting? Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, <laughs> but That's it's you know, it's nice because it's like okay, I can use the auto settings, which help, like in yeah. a wedding situation. Uh, but then I'm like, these aren't coming out the way I want, exactly. and I know how to fix it, and yeah. I don't want to spend hours fixing it on the computer. Right. Um, so that's really nice. But yeah, the biggest shift for me was the fine art of photography definitely changed. Um, when we first got into photography and then we got into the HDR, that was really fascinating when that first um, came out and people were really doing the heavy duty photo editing and everything like okay. that. Um, but I still like just do the genuine, you know, natural light, not yeah. overdoing it. Um, just, you know, the moment as it is. Yeah. Basically. That's what our Christmas photos are. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, it just looks like you're hanging out at Goldwater Lake or <laughs> yeah, our family exactly, was. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah, it was really and, nice. And black and white, I think, is the only thing I saw that I miss. I mean, oh, the okay. raw black and white Ansel Adams. Um, I was fortunate in Tucson. We had the um, University of Arizona Center for Creative Photography. Okay. Where you could go and see the original Ansel, Ansel Adam pictures. All the photographers, really? they, they had their original photos, they have the original negatives, and wow. you could actually go, they would put up galleries every month, but okay. then as a student in high school, we'd actually go and we get to see some of the original artists and the original prints. Yep. And so having that memory of seeing that, and then of course being in the dark room printing my own black and whites, yeah, it's just not the same you know, emotion and texture right. with digital as far as black and white. It's not. Mm-mm. No, even in film, since I've got into film recently, there is an aspect to how, how can you get your film, how, how can you get your video footage to look more film like? Right, exactly. Because uh, it has it just has such a special. Yeah. L- and there's look all these filters it. when you're editing editing your photos, and you can do all these filters and make it look old it, and stuff, but it's still missing it's something. It's not the same. Yeah, it's, it's not. not the no, same. It's not there. Yeah. Um, so it's it's interesting. So, I mean, that that's definitely the shift. But, you know, once you realize this is my style and you just stick with it, you're good. Yep. Um, if you try to overdo it, you don't find your – if you don't find a style, mm-hmm. then you kind of get lost. Totally. Yeah. Hmm. So. Man. So much <laughs> – I, I just I love it how you, <laughs> you started in the dark room literally mm-hmm. and then fast forward now you just yeah do it all digitally yeah so I mean mm. I'm again I'm glad to have seen the full circle and I think that's yeah massively important mm-hmm. I would argue that your experience puts you just at a different level just because you ha- have that experience um, and obviously film is different than digital but there are there's just a lot that you would have learned. In yeah. the film that translates. Right. And again, just in having so many years of experience of, of working with people either in a sales environment, a business environment, a photography yeah. environment. So when I at a wedding, I can, you know, manage the situation, manage the stress. Yes. Um, you know, portraits, a family of six, yeah. you know, like yeah. getting everybody to do something. Mm-hmm. You know, it makes a difference. But, you know, you're not you're not um you know, I see these uh, all the time. They're like, oh, well, this is a, you know, a quick photo shoot or, you know, uh, a 30-minute session. I'm like, you can't do senior portraits in 30 minutes in one outfit. It's like, I do senior portraits. It's we go out. We have fun. Hours. Yeah, bring yeah. bring what you want. I usually say people, I'm like, an hour and a half is about all long somebody will last. Yeah. Makes I'm in sense. for it for whatever, but an hour and a half is about yep. all the longer they'll last. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, senior portraits, bring whatever you want. Yeah. Change clothes. Let's go have let's fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's no limits. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then that person's probably going to be a lot more natural in an hour right. and a half or two than yeah, exactly. 25, 30 minutes. Yeah, literally. in 30 minutes, you're like, it's just... <laughs> you're just hurrying to hurry. Right. That's you actually... You might as well do studio. You might just be like yeah. in the Sears studio or something. <laughs> totally. When I started doing... People probably don't even know what the stu- Sears studio is anymore. <laughs> I don't even... Remember the old you said Sears, Sears studio? yeah, okay. remember like a, like a JC Penney little yes, studio, yeah, okay. little studios, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say when I st- first started doing video, I was doing, I was a realtor doing mm-hmm. videos with local businesses, oh, okay. and they were 
super short, two or three oh, yeah. minutes. Hey, I'm with Bobby Jane from Way Out West Photography. Yeah. Tell them what you do. And it's just... Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I've transitioned to this long format because I just I just like it a lot better. Mm-hmm. It just gives people a lot... It give, It's a lot more fun for me because right. I get to really know you. And then it's it just allows the dialogue to naturally flow. We'll go on some tangents. We come back and... I just I like that, and that's kind of what I think about your mm-hmm. those longer form photo right. shoots. Well, yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. You you capture you capture the person's true personality. Yes, it makes it makes a big difference. So well said. And the same thing, like just like weddings too. I mean, you want to capture the day. You don't want to capture just a half an hour of the ceremony. Heck no, <laughs> that's not what I paid you for. Well, yeah. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. Before we segue, any final things on Way Out West photography? Anything you want to let people know? Um, no, I'm I'm just glad that I can, you know, even with all the changes and, you know, even though the market's been more saturated with photographers, mm-hmm. I'm glad I still have that niche. And yeah. I people that call me, they go to my website and they're like, I like your style. Yeah. And I'm like, I have a style? Okay. <laughs> right. Well, you've been doing it. Yeah, like, yeah. You, you, but yeah. it's interesting to hear it from somebody else, you know? Totally. And then that's what drives them to me. And mm-hmm. I, so I'm like, okay, well, you're definitely who I want to photograph too as right. well. Um, so it's it's great to see that still evolve and still get that connection. And, and yeah. then I'm, you know, again, I'm not doing as much as I used to, but I mm-hmm. still enjoy the people that I meet. Yeah. So, yeah. That's cool. Yeah, that brings up a good point. There, uh, there needs to be a good fit between not only your style, mm-hmm. but not your personality too. Right. I mean, yeah. you go out and you're with someone for a couple hours. Yeah. Yeah, you, you want or to their be wedding, a, yeah. Or yeah, or a wedding more <laughs> than a few hours. Yeah, there's you, a whole other story. Some weird weddings I've done, but yeah. <laughs> you want it to be a good fit, right? Yeah. So yeah, I didn't, I didn't. <laughs> and though the fact that when you do weddings, this is what I wanted. To, something I wanted to bring up. You're like the the master conductor. <laughs> well, well, and I started <laughs> you know, doing that as well. So you, as de- by default, you become the wedding coordinator as well. Yes. So um, for a few years here, I w- kind of expanded my team to do wedding coordinating and the photography Makes because sense. we were doing it anyway. <laughs> you already <laughs> doing it. Yeah. And we're like, I need more support here. Yeah. And, and then you have <clears> the kind <throat> of the say so like, OK, because the photography is your, you know, your outline of your day. Um, you have to be involved in what's going on. Yeah. So it's very important that you are tied into your photographer for your wedding for that reason. And mm-hmm. they know what's going on for the day. Yeah. So. <laughs> that's hilarious. Yeah. You wear a lot of ball caps. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, but that's my, even my day job, though. That's just who yeah. I am. That's just my personality. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You do wear a lot of hats at Matt's. Oh, I my do. gosh. Yeah, I like, do. Every small business. Yeah. Has so many different things they need to be done. And so yeah, yeah. you fit the bill. Yeah, I love doing it. Do so sometimes stuff. I'm like, I can't answer the phone at three different times. Yeah, right. One person <clears throat> call me at once. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Come on, people. <laughs> Let's segue. What keeps you in Greater Prescott? You know, it's it's the beauty of Prescott. It's the climate, the location, like we talked about mm-hmm. earlier. You can go to Phoenix. You can go to Tucson. You can kind of go everywhere, but yet you have this great... Um, culture, yep. um, all four seasons up here. Um, it's getting harder and harder. It's more and more expensive to live up it here. Is. Mountain tax. <laughs> Are you, that, I've never heard that, but that's it, yeah. We ha- we do. Split. We have to pay the mountain tax up you here. So, do. Someone told me that once, and I'm like, oh my gosh, that is so yeah. true. Um, but you know, Arizona real estate's bad. No matter where you go, you know, it's expensive. Yeah. So might as well spend the money here. <laughs> That's what I think. Yeah. yeah. And then, and then again, like you know, I get to go to Drome or Sedona to do photography. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So like a mecca of just unique spots. Exactly. So. Huh. <laughs> That's fun. I like how you go to Jerome. Jerome is such a unique. It is. I don't. I can't hardly even call it a town. Just a spot. Have you been to Gold King Mine? No. Okay, so your no, next family I, photos are in Gold King Mine. I love cars, <laughs> love motors. Oh, like yeah. I love old stuff. You will go nuts up there. Yeah, absolutely. And Road you, trip. you use the word architecture. Like yeah. I love how just cars look. Like yeah, that's yeah. Just, there's an art to it. There is an art to um, it. It's yeah. beautiful and especially when it's kind of old and dilapidated yep. and yeah, rusted <laughs> over. Like that's how they did it yeah. in the 50s. Yeah, or, I know, exactly. Well, no, cars these days we won't see them. In a museum, you know, no. 60 years from now. No way. They're not going to be saved. No. So. <laughs> that, that's mostly a good thing. Yeah. They're just so all vanilla. And I know. <laughs> sterile. <laughs> but don't get me going on that. Um, what do you do in your spare time aside from 
work at Guardian and do the photography stuff? Um, my pets. Um, yep. I only have one now, but I used to have three pugs, but I have one old man left. Um, hiking. Yeah. Um, just what my friends call Bobby adventures. Okay. Going and exploring places. So. Yeah. <laughs> Which I think the photograph on the front of your website, mm -hmm. you sitting on top of the Subaru. Yeah. That's like, I probably just such a perfect example. Yeah. And of I've like, kept that on there. Cause I mean, that's like over 10, about 10, 12 years okay. old, you know, long hair, but I'm like, you know, that's just, that's a great picture. That's you, know? you. Yeah. Yeah. It is me. It's like you know? a largely what you've <laughs> talked about. I have here. a different Subaru now, but I still have a Subaru. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, fascinating how a photograph can tell so much right and tell a story yeah and that's exactly what i do yeah yeah, that, that's just <laughs> yeah. so cool just getting that right picture of the person or the moment yeah. and it just it does it tells a story and that's how, what photographers have been doing for over 100 years that was always their essence yeah. is to capture that so yeah we'll yeah. keep doing it exactly <laughs> all right we, this is the rapid fire question section. Okay. Oh, no. Answer with the first thing that comes to mind. And if you just can't answer with one, give us more. <laughs> okay. Doesn't matter. First question What's your favorite thing about Greater Prescott? The pine trees. What's your favorite restaurant in Greater Prescott? Mm, El Gato What's the number one thing on your Greater Prescott bucket list? Still to do bucket list? Correct. More for more off roading. Where? Um, I done the Bradshaws, okay. so I would say probably more towards like Mingus. Okay. Yeah. Would you take the Subaru or is it more? No, I used to have a Jeep, and then okay. I have friends that have Jeeps. Okay. So yeah, but I've done a lot of jeeping yeah. in my years. <laughs> Side note: When I lived in Phoenix, I couldn't understand why everyone owned a Jeep. Like, <laughs> yeah, I don't think they ever took them off road. No, but now that I'm up here, I'm like. I want one. Yeah, oh, my gosh, because there's just so many trails. Yeah. You can just get out. Yeah. Oh, I really <laughs> want one. What is your favorite all-time photograph? Oh, my gosh. Um, I have one that is of a Thunderbird taken up there in on the way to Durango, Colorado. Okay. And it's like a side visitor, a little tourist shop. Okay. Um, Indian store and there's all these Navajo blankets hanging up and it's on my website. Um, so it's this big old fender of a red Thunderbird and all these Navajo blankets hanging behind it. Gotcha. And I have it on a big old metal print in my living room. So. Oh, cool. Yeah. Is it just super colorful as well? Bright and everything. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So now everybody has to go to my website and see it. But yeah. Yeah. Well, you keep talking about <laughs> yeah, I all, all these I know. I'm sitting here thinking, oh, I should have brought one to hang on the wall. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Next question, what are three words to describe living in Greater Prescott? Mm, um, hot, cold, and beautiful. Okay. <laughs> that pretty much sums up Arizona. That works. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> if you weren't being an office manager and doing Way Out West photography, what type of work would you be doing? I would probably be doing marketing for businesses. Okay. So, because that kind of that ties into my photography. Absolutely. So, yeah. Yeah. Last question: What's your favorite summer activity in Greater Prescott? Mm, hiking, hiking. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Take the take exactly. diesel out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Which is hilarious because when I did the podcast at Community Nature Center, I know Diesel got in you, trouble. <laughs> you and your mom walked by, and we later figured out, like, oh, that was, was just before we met. That's hilarious. And then Diesel wasn't on a leash, and he came up and interrupted guys' little interview like he normally does. Yeah. So. yeah. But now that everybody knows Diesel, that's just what he does. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> to wrap it up, look at the camera and let people know if they have questions, if they're curious about anything, and just kind of give your okay. give a little pitch. So wayoutwestphotography.com or wayoutwestphotos.com um, is my website. All my contact info is there. Yeah. Um, again, I still love doing family portraits. Would love to capture some more seniors okay. for graduating this year, senior portraits. Um, here locally or in Drome or Sedona, you know, I'm ready for an adventure. So. I love it. <laughs> adventure is such a great thing. Oh, yes. my goodness. <laughs> and it sounds like you've integrated that into yeah. your business. Yeah. And way out west, I mean, like, the, the name goes with it, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That 
It's ta- that's tattooed on my ankle way out west photography. So. Ah, yeah. Way out west. It's not so. going anywhere. No, nope. and then we're going to change it. <laughs> do, do you think the internet will still be, do you still think you'll have a website when you get like really, really, really I hope old? so because that's where things are archived right now. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> like, so. I just think about what, what's it going to be like when, I know. when I we're mean, 40 years older than we are now. Oh, it's scary thought. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Did I forget anything? Did no. You not, were you not able to say anything? No, I'm excited. Thank you for having me. Was it fun? Yes, it was fun. Good. <laughs> was it anything like you expected? Um, I've done a lot of interviews, okay. so yeah. yeah, I wasn't scared. Yeah, I, I didn't think you were. You fit perfectly. <laughs> well, then, I really appreciate your time. It's Thank been you. fun to get to know you and fun to work with you and Matt. Good. And I'm glad I could get you on the pod. Are you? Now we're going to get Matt on it. Okay. And next, family photos are in Jerome. <laughs> yes. Oh, and it's just so unique there. Like oh, I, yeah. I've decided that y- the U word is what I now mm-hmm. refer to it as. It's just my favorite. Yeah. I just love unique things. Yeah. And you, you talk about cars. So many cars just look the same. Right. And so I like a unique car. Right. I might not choose it if I had the opportunity, but I just like unique things. I know. Like, just make it fresh. <laughs> make it fun. Yeah. Make it unique. Well, let's wrap it up with a nice big smile. I'll put in all your information. Okay. And so people can link over to it. And you guys, ask Bobby questions. Yeah. Um, I'll list everything that she enjoys doing and what okay. she considers her niche. So Yay. let's wrap it up with a nice big smile. Thank you very much, Bobby. Thank you. Have a great day, guys. Thank you, guys. <laughs>